Hello Flossy, my name is Laura and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross stitch. And I usually say with a little bit of paper crafting thrown in too. And today is the very special one where we do have a little bit of paper crafting thrown in. If you are new, first I'd like to say welcome. Uh, my normal videos I film on Friday mornings and then they usually upload Friday late afternoon, evening, or in some cases, if there's a problem, Saturday morning. And I would love to have you hang out with me uh, week to week and uh, chat stitching. This one, uh, this is the culmination of our 2024 Artist Trading Card Winter Swap. So the goal was to create something in the theme of winter uh, all the stitchers had until February 1st-ish to send it on in. And I am happy to say we have 118 trading cards that came in. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for each and every one of you. Uh, the first one went well in, uh, in the autumn swap, but I was not sure what would happen the second time around. So I am thrilled and blown away. And you all have come up with even more ways to fully finish these little works of art. Uh, and if you are new and you're not sure what a trading card is, if you Google it with images, you will see painted, hand-drawn, paper-crafted, stamped, stitched, watercolor, you name it. I've seen some cool ones with just ripped paper. You can also look on Instagram. There are hashtags that sort of work. <laughs> and there's just a plethora of ideas that you can come up with. And if you are not sure how you want to finish these and you want to participate later on, watch these videos because there are so many great, great ideas here. I know I'm going to watch them back when I have to do fully finishes because there's just some wonderful ideas. So let's jump right in because this video is going to be long no matter how you look at it. I'm not going to say who the stitcher is. All the trading cards do have names on the back. If a person did forget and a couple did, I just put their name on it. From there, you know, you can put the date, you can put a title, you can put the information of who you are or where you got it from. That is all very individual. All I asked was to have somebody put their name on it. Jumping right in. Here we go. Okay, and I can guarantee you right now, I'm going to say things are cute and adorable and you're all set to go. And I, I just know it because as I was practicing and going through this, I, <laughs> I was noticing that. So just roll with it. Let's just go with it. And uh, if it happens, it happened. But I'm so excited to show you all these that we're just going to do it. This first one is fully stitched all the way from top to bottom, or, or they utilize, you know, the top to bottom. So this is one way if you are really, really not sure about the actual finishing part, stitch it to the uh, exact measurements, three and a half, two and a half. And then once you put your interfacing on, you just layer it onto cardstock. So this one has beads as well as the stitching. Does it say where it's from? <laughs> Chart from Cross Stitcher Magazine. So there you Oh, see, I was going to say, so there you go. That I can guarantee you. I should title it, There You Go. <laughs> I myself used beads for snow, so that's really a fun way to, to add just that little bit of extra element. This one here, I recognize that. That's a Shannon Christine. I think that's part of... It's called Winter Hot Chocolate. And I want to say that that might be part of a cup of cheer. You know, the row of all of them, all the mugs. Um, maybe. Or Shannon Christine put out a whole bunch of freebies for the 12 days of Christmas. It's one or the other. I know I've seen it. So this stitcher, you know, stitched it up. And then they have a layer of pattern paper and a layer of cardstock. So you can do tight layers. You can do wide layers. Whatever works with your stitching. And then they actually put a little word up there that says yum. This one here. Let's see here. Christmas gift tags by Cross Stitch by Coconut. Cross Stitch by Coconut on Etsy. So the element itself is the, um, the snowman. There is the border. And then if you notice right one single layer, they have opened it up, opened up the stitching. So it's like the teeniest, tiniest, tiniest of fringes. Now, after that, we have a layer of white cardstock. So because the border is here, that gives you that break between the stitching fabric and then the white cardstock. And then they used a pattern paper to kind of bring it all in with the reds, kind of a plaid. This one here, designer unknown. 
is what the back says on that for the design. Now this one here, that snowman makes me laugh, I have to say. <laughs> Uh, this is full coverage basically, right? So that's full coverage. But what they did was they kept a certain amount of layer of their fabric. So that became their layer without having to layer anything. And then they put it on a base piece of cardstock. So that's another way if you, if you don't want to do too many layers, just extend a certain amount all the way around your stitching. This one obviously is easy to figure out and measure because it was a full coverage piece. If you had something that had a border like the snowman, you could do the same sort of thing. Just count out how many. This one, I want to say I started to stitch this one or did stitch this one. I can't remember. It looks so, so familiar. This is, now this is, this is a neat idea that I really, I saw this and I thought that was kind of cool. So it's stitched in full right here. And then this is a very, very thin layer of sparkly, I'm assuming ribbon is what it is. Sometimes I don't always know my trims or the embellishment names, but I'll just do the best I can. It's super, super thin, but what they did was they made this a little bit higher, so you had this little extra space. You do your stitching, you have the layer of beige, then you put that to kind of match all of that and another layer. So it, it makes it look like it's layered, even though really it's just one piece of ribbon. You know me, I love layering. When you see my scrapbooks, you know that I do like little strips of cardstock or washi tape or ribbon sometimes and the layering, it's all about the layering. <laughs> this one is called The Robin Still Sings in Winter. And this one, the stitcher used the entire piece so that they were able to, it says Needlecraft, December, 1991. I wonder if Needlecraft was a book or a magazine, not sure. They utilized the whole piece because they used uh, opal. I, you know I've got some winter pieces that I've got on the opal, which I really like because then it gives it kind of that sparkly, you know, first flakes of snow when the sun's hitting it kind of look. So you have that plus then the stitch piece right here. So utilizing what fabrics, and I'm going to show you something else down the line, what I mean by that. Use your fabrics in different ways if you have little pieces that that itself can be the decoration. Let's see here. These two are still in, and you know, I don't remember. Let me see how hard it'll be to take them out. Okay, we got one. And, oh, there we go. We got the other one. Okay. So this is kind of the same sort of element with uh, two different colors. So it's the same stitcher that stitched these. Let's see here. This one is a part of an owl forest piece. Both of them are from an owl forest piece. Now, I was really looking at this. I don't know if this is watercolor paper and it is possibly watercolored. I'm not sure. There, it is definitely a treated paper and then there is gold sparkle. If I had to guess, if I was doing it, it would be a gold metallic spray, but you also could take paint and flick it. Do you know what I mean? And you can get that kind of look as well. But if you do have those, I, I use the mica mists. I'm sure there's lots of other things. You could even use, you know how there's glitter, um, I'll say spray paint for want of a better word. I remember decorating like gift bags with this, you know, you just lay them all out and you spray them. You could do the same sort of thing with this. You just gotta watch your mist and all that. So the stitcher uh, did their piece, they fringed it, but they created the background. And that is the same case right here so this one, slightly different in the fact that I want to say this is actually, yeah, so this looks like it's drawn and painted. So they created like a painting on the wall. So you've got your stitched piece, another owl forest crop. And then this back here is again, probably treated like a, a watercolor and it's got the spray sparkle. And then they created the actual kind of frame. I think that's neat. I would not be able to freehand draw that, but I bet you there are different pictures online that I could probably look at. <laughs> and that's probably how I would figure out how to do that. But kind of a cool idea in that sense too. So you can treat your papers in certain ways and just have fun with it in that sense. Um, if you if you want to get a little painty or watercolory or do you could you could um, you can tea dye 
You can also coffee dye, but you can tea dye and coffee dye paper. It's fantastic. Uh, there are some, well, the tutorials online are generally for large things for people doing junk journals and the like, but you can take a tea bag and run it on your cardstock. And that would also give you something along the lines. This one here, I've also stitched this piece, but mine is, I stitched it on a different count. So that's kind of cool. Let me, let me show you. You can take the same piece and depending on what count you use, you can have two different looks. So this one right here, I'll put mine over here for now back. Because this, this one, they, they basically cut around the outer edge of their stitching and then they have pattern paper and then they have, do you see right here, four just um, kind of corner stickers. So again, kind of frame it like you're framing it with a, um, like the photo corners kind of thing. This one here is a stitched piece that they fussy cut. So that just kind of changes the um, the look of it. Plus, you know, here you'd have a lot of extra fabric, right? I mean, you could have just done it to the corners, but then what to do with this? So they fussy cut it and then they just uh, let, took a piece of cardstock that matched pretty, pretty darn close to their stitched uh, um, floss. And it's all, it's all done. Now, some of these, let's see. Okay, this is from Mitten Holder and America's Best Cross Stitch, designed by Patricia Sparks. Some of them are in, on darker color cardstocks, and I can't read. <laughs> so I'll do my best, but if I don't say it, if you have your information on the back, just know that it's my eyesight. It's not you. <laughs> this one was an approach I never would have thought of. So the snowflake itself is stitched. I'm assuming this is a covered button. And then we have two matching snowflake elements on the top and the bottom. So you have a nice diagonal. And then they took two things of sparkle sort of ribbon and just kind of created that border between them. So it looks, you know, it can, kind of completes the whole look with it. Here, again, Great minds, right? People think alike and it's fantastic because even though they think alike, it looks totally different. So you have such great variety in all of these pieces. So this is another stitched mitten, different design, of course. And is this, this is probably a variegated if I were to guess. Either that or that was a lot of stitching. <laughs> I'm going to go with variegated. I don't think it says here. Nope. It is from Al Forest Embroidery, and it's fussy cut and then placed on a metallic uh, pattern paper. Now this one here, so here's an interesting idea. You don't always have to fringe all the way around. So the top and the bottom of this stitched piece was enough to be the three and a half inches, but here would have been a little bit extra um, fabric. So what they did was they fringed on both sides of the sides and then they layered it on some pattern paper that would match. And there are also some beads on there as well. Snow Sparkle is what this one's called. Here we have a cardinal. That is most definitely a winter bird. So it's stitched on, you know, fabric that mimics snowing, which is right there. Takes, takes it all, you know, takes it into the design element right there. You have your... This one is an actual button and it is sewn on and everything is everything stitched. So you have just the one element, but because you've got the, the fabric that was utilized in such a way, it's decorative. Such good ideas everybody had. This one is a pattern by Doreen Jones. And what was neat here, so this fabric is a, I would say a charcoal gray, and the stitcher took a metallic sort of pen and created, I'm thinking, I don't, unless the fabric was like that, maybe the fabric was like that. I'm not sure. It could be already designed by that or they could have done it themselves. I think it's a great idea either way. If you find paper, a pattern of uh, fabric that's already like that, then it's pretty easy. Otherwise you can also use the element of something like a metallic. Uh, pen and you can go from there. All right, this one can be in so many different directions depending on what kind of look you want. You know, it can go sideways or it can go up and down. The words and the information's on this way, so I'm going to hold it this way. 
So we have the main stitched element in the center in kind of like a <coughs> oatmeal-ish sort of um, fabric. And then we have on either side, these are, I'm just gonna call them, they're kind of, um, I don't know what the material is, but there's several different people have used variations of that. So I'm gonna just call them embellishments, snowflake embellishments. And then they used, I didn't ever knew that there was actual sparkle rickrack. So this rickrack is sparkly. So when you look at it, it shimmers with the glitter. You will see rickrack utilized in a couple places uh, this time around and great idea. I don't have any. I need to go look for some. This one here, the chart is Quiet Night by Irina Konoplich. Kon Konoplich? I'm sorry if I said that wrong. And we have the main stitch element and then the stitcher created photo corners. Now these look like cardstock photo corners. So what I would do is I would, I would cut out exactly measured two squares. And then if you cut right down the middle, exact again, all four of your photo, photo corners will be exactly the same size. And then it creates that kind of frame around the piece itself. This one here, the stitcher did two and they utilized a couple of same elements. So I'm gonna show you that. And both times they took a very small stitch piece and kind of worked around there. So we have what's a coffee cup. This side we have, um, it's an embossed kind of cardstock. I'm not sure if the stitcher embossed it or if it came that way. And this side is not smooth cardstock. It's, it's definitely got a little bit of dimension to it. And I believe that's how you buy that. Then there's some patterned paper that matches kind of the coffee bean. And then these are little sparkly um, little dots, but they actually have a glitter within them that is almost brownish goldish. So it, is reminiscent of the whole coffee theme. And then the stitcher did this one. And this time when they stitched it, they still have the embossed paper here, a little bit more of the element with the patterned paper. And then they incorporated a matching ribbon. So you can see, same sort of idea, but two different looks. This one here, you know I like to use brads in a lot of things and that's what this um, stitcher did, it is called Winter Hop. And you have the stitched piece right here. Oh, I don't wanna hit the camera. I'm not sure if it ended up uh, moving at all. And then you've got the pattern, you've got the different kind of patterned paper here, add a little bit of glitter glue-ish type of thing. And then you have, there's some brads and all the elements come together. There's a little bit of ribbon on this. It says love. So you can go and use all sorts of little elements if you want, but you don't have to. It's really up to you. This one here, I recognized this pattern right away. This is from Hands on Design. I think it's Frosty First Forest. First Forest is, wait a minute. Yep, that says First Forest. So we've got the stitched element and it's made to go right along the edges. So cute. This one here, again, this stitcher utilized the fringe technique. And then I was trying to figure out, originally when I looked quick, I wasn't sure if it was a die cut square, but I'm thinking, and I'm not sure, It's this is called winter, by the way. If they used, you know, there are scissors, there's pinking scissors, right? But then for paper crafting, especially, there's all sorts of shaped scissors. You know, you can do ones that look like grass. You can do ones that look like scallops and so on and so forth. And this one kind of looks like that. So I'm wondering if that's what the stitcher used was they had the, the actual element and then they cut along the four edges and then it gave them a decorative frame with the cardstock color of the red and then go back with the white on the cardstock base. This is another example of, this is from Just Cross Stitch, April, 2019. This is another example of where if you utilize your fabric, you can get an interesting look. So if I look close, both of these snowflakes are actually stitched in white, but because the stitcher used a, a fabric that had, do you, I'm not sure if you can tell, it, it definitely different colors on both sides. So it adds a totally different look to them and then 
you've got a decorative element with your stitching. And then all they had to do was find some pattern paper that they could put right on over that and just tied it all together. It is a sparkly, metallic-y sort of paper. We definitely, I loved seeing there was a lot of sparkle and metallic in this uh, this whole winter theme. So it's fabulous because I like sparkle when I see it. And, you know, we all have, well, we don't all have, but you know when you have tried um, the hand-dyed fabrics, you know, sometimes, especially it feels like in the corners, parts of our areas, bottoms, areas that we haven't used before, I would save those scraps for trading cards if you plan on making some more. And you might have some fantastic little edges like my Celtic dragon when I'm done with the Phoenix. If there's little areas, that could make the coolest fabric to use for a trading card. And some of the most elaborate parts of the modeling are in the corners. So utilize those, utilize those scraps if you've got them. This one here, I'm gonna keep in the, the plastic because I don't want to disrupt and dislodge the uh, element there. So this is stitched, it's mostly stitched. This is a stone street. I remember stitching this, the Christmas version. And then up here with the stitching, it's stitched into a heart. But what the stitcher did was they added, um, she added a very um, sparkly dimensional heart to the top to kind of add a dimension. I can't remember this. I remember watching this. This is from a, a floss tuber. I remember her saying maybe that she was, you couldn't see it as much. So she wanted to add a little something extra to that. If I remember, that's what she said on her video. Now this one here, this one is cool because you can use, look at, you can, depending on how you want to display it or show it in your, um, however you do it. I use baseball sleeves, by the way, and that's how I hold my trading cards. But, you know, you can put them on little tiny easels if you want, and you can rotate them out for seasons and so on and so forth. So this one has a multitude of looks to it if you wanted to. So we have the stitch piece in the center, and then this is a, I'm going to say twine. I'm not exactly sure if it is exact twine, but what the stitcher what did was they kind of put a little outline around the edge. And then we have two different, oops, excuse me. We have two different, they're metallics. Yeah, well, they're shiny, kind of a metallic finish to them. And this one, the stitcher ripped. So depending on which way you rip, you can either get a, if it's, if it's, if the paper or cardstock is white backed or solid. So if it's got a white backing, if you rip it a certain way, you'll have white showing. If you rip it the other way, you won't, you'll just have. So you can play around with even what you do with ripping. And then this uh, stitcher decided to round the corners, which it's the same size. So that's also a great way to add a little something extra to your trading cards. All right, make sure I get this one right. This one here is basically, essentially, yeah, it's it's for the most part full covered, full coverage. You have a little bit, that little edging is all fabric and the stitcher also added a little bit on three of the sides, fringe. They kind of ran out of room on here and I get you. <laughs> that happens to me quite often. Um, so they've added some fringe to kind of finish it off as well. When in doubt, fringe is a good thing. This is another stitcher who decided that, but look at now we've got, I, I love how we have teeny tiny fringe, medium, and this one is a nice long fringe. So this stitcher, this is, um, it's Lost in Stitches, Lisa. I recognize the pattern. Does it say what it's called? Winter Snow Mini. And this stitcher did nice long um, kind of fringe, a little bit more at the top because they had the space and then the bottom, and then they added that little element right there, the embellishment to kind of the extra snowflake to, to kind of pull it all in. And that kind of keeps your top fringe in place. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, this one has words. Sim uh, Christmas Ornaments 2023 Just Cross Stitch Magazine. And it is Simple Joys was the pattern. This one was certainly big enough to do by two and a half by three and a half. And let's see. Yeah, sometimes I have to look at it just to make sure I'm not missing some of the elements. But these are nice long stitches right there with those elements. 
So it kind of adds something a little different, but it ended up being just the right size. So they could just layer it right on their cardstock. Snowmen and penguins were always popular. And why not? They're cute. This one is called Chilbert. Chilbert the snowman. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's a nice big snowman. And then a little tiny charm at the bottom. Great way. You can use charms. You can glue them on. You could... Um, like this one here, you could have you could have used a brad to hold it on as well if you wanted it to move a little bit. Kind of whatever you want element-wise. Now this one, the stitcher utilized sparkle. So this is a pattern by Marlene Pastime Pieces. And I want to say it is some sort of, I'm going to go with Treasure Braid. I have no idea. <laughs> but it's that sparkly and it's not, it's not, um, it's not a twelve. It's definitely more sparkle. So here, the whole, the whole element is the words but and some snowflakes there. But because you've got two different, I want to say that the snowflakes are a different color slightly than the stitching. So all that sparkle just completes the whole look of it. So it's the size of the cardstock. Uh, and so you just, you glue it on the cardstock. This one here is from Christmas Greetings Blackwork Series number three, Mary Jane Collection Snow Tree. So this one has a combination of X's, if you see around here, and then also blackwork. Then the stitcher, so the stitcher cut it down to size, added some matching pattern paper, and then they also put a little, I wanna, is it a cardinal? I'll say cardinal element on top to go with the whole look of it. Here we have another stitcher that used rickrack. I really need to get some. I, you know, I have a die cut that is rickrack. It's a pain to... <laughs> Although now I have my little glue pen, so I might be able to use it better. So, so I might have to... Oh, I still have one that I might have to finish, so I'll have to think about that. Anyway... <laughs> I'm see in my mind I'm already thinking of different things that I can do when I look at all of these. So this one is actually framed. So the inside that um the stitching is laid down and then this is laid over with the square open. So it kind of like it looks like you're looking into the frame. We have rickrack. We have those are probably handwritten a little snowflakes and then another layer right here that says winter 2024. This one here, I'm gonna show you both of them. It's the same stitcher. I cannot read, well, I can read it, but I don't know how to pronounce it. So I am not going to attempt to. Let's see, this is cross stitch and a little paint thrown in. Or is this the one? No, this is this is snowflake number two, snowflake number one. This is different. There's something else on, I was looking on the backs and I couldn't pronounce it. So. What this stitcher did is they used, I wanna say this is a toile plus some regular. So a combination of um, different flosses right there. And they used a nice, fun, bright fabric. And then they used a little bit of paint to add that kind of little element all around it. And then again, same idea, a little bit different element. Again, used a toile and I wanna say a few that are not a toile. And then they pulled out the purple and did some paint around the edges. And both of these, because they use the paint as kind of their edging, they just have the fabric all the way to the edges and then layer it on the on the cardstock backing. Use all the types of mediums available to you. All right, I told you there was snowmen and penguins. So let's do a penguin. <laughs> let's see. Winter fun. And it's what I believe it's called. And we have, this is stitched on that fabric that has kind of like the snowflakes on it. So again, ready-made design already on there. They stitched the, the little penguin. And then what they did was they used um, felt as the snow, which I have one of my pieces. Yeah, one of my pieces is felt as well. And I like how this the penguin is kind of up here and then the, the hill kind of, so you can kind of just envision the penguin getting ready to slide down the snowbank. 
Now, this is an interesting idea, and I forget to do this. I'm sure we all have fabrics that we've got for backings, or I don't use a ton of fabrics for backings, but I have some. Maybe you've bought a set, you're not sure what to do with some of them. So this stitcher, they stitched their design, so that's all the middle piece right here. But then, if I look closely, this layer is not patterned paper. It, if I'm right, I think I am. If I'm wrong, let me know. <laughs> um, that's actual fabric. So you could do fabric, interface that, put it on your cardstock, and you know, cut it however you want it, and then put your stitch piece over the fabric. And that way, you know, maybe you don't have a place where you can go and look for patterned paper, but if you have some fabric at home, you only need a tiny little piece. Look in your scraps. That would be a great thing for scraps. This one is called Winter Robin. So we have the stitched piece. And I wonder if that is a fabric that's printed. It might be. And then they layered it onto a kind of plaid pattern paper. And then Winter Wonderland. That could be an element that they created or a sticker in and of itself. So this is, you know, you have your piece here and you're not sure what to do with it here. Adding just a little bit of words like that, or you can add, you know, any type of element that would just be a line across and that would break up all of that extra plaid at the bottom. Now this stitcher, this is interesting. I can't remember. It's called Time for Tea. This is also a floss tuber. And I, I remember her talking about, and I can't remember if she used if this is a metallic paint, I don't think it's water. No, it looks more paint to me. So they took their base, uh, I'll say cardstock, and they gave it kind of a metallic paintish look and or whatever element it happens to be. And then they kept a little bit kind of like your hand dyed fabric always has kind of you know different areas of modeling. And then that way they've created the background element. They created a color that match to a certain degree their stitch piece they put their stitch piece on and it's a wonderful it's wonderful shine when you look at it up close and you kind of put it against the light I'm not sure if that's showing up this is another good way to use some of your smalls this is mittens and a warm drink so two little elements were stitched you can fussy cut them however close you want and this stitcher used it looks like variegated floss so that's nice you know to kind of if you want to take a solid sort of stitch and use a little and it wouldn't take much right variegated floss then you can kind of add a little bit of extra interest to it too so when you look at it at a distance you can see the the kind of different changes of color they put those on their cardstock with some words Oh, and you know what? There's sparkle to this cardstock. I don't know if they created that themselves with a spray or if it came that way. But if you look close, you get a nice, I'm not going to be able to necessarily show you that, but there is a fun sparkle and glitter to it. Mo always hates when I bring glitter into the house. <laughs> and glitter glue. He's always like, not only is it glitter, but it's glue, so it'll stick to everything. No less. <laughs> Glitter sticks to everything regardless, right? This one here, again, we have cardinals. And what the stitcher did, this is from Better Homes and Garden, Beautiful Cross Stitch, page 103, Beautiful Birds. And what they did is they stitched their piece. There are some beads here added, but they put it on the diagonal. So this way it uses up a little bit more of the space rather than just going straight up and down. So if you're not sure what else you want to put on it, maybe change the direction of your stitched piece and um, then you've got the full piece ready to go. This one here, so this stitcher, um, no exact title of the piece. This one, what the stitcher did was they utilized all of these extra elements. So the actual stitched piece is this little cute little cabin right here. And then this would be patterned paper that they put. So they nestled the cabin between the trees and there's some glitter and then let's see here this is an extra layer so this is an extra layer of um, ripped cardstock 
And this one, you can see, you've got the dimension where it was ripped in towards and they used that open rip look and then some glitter along the ways. I'm so glad you all use when you use paper crafting, I can figure out most of the time the technique. If you start doing some kind of fun sewing stuff, it looks cool, but I have no clue what it is. <laughs> Alrighty, this one here. This is a design adapted from Colorado Cross Stitcher. So the stitcher has their stitched piece right here on a really, I, it, I can't tell, is it gray? Is there some purple? It's, depending on how you look at it, do you see how, again, they utilized the fabric? And then... They matched it on a back kind of cardstock. Yeah, that feels like cardstock. And then what they used was eyelets. So you can use eyelets for your corners as well. Eyelets, brads, you know, stickers, flat back crystals, flat back pearls, so many different elements. This one here is also from Better Homes and Garden, beautiful cross stitch, baby animals. And this time the stitcher used, is that washi tape? My guess is is washi tape. It looks like it. There might be some cardstock, but this is definitely more of a tape on the sides. You know me, I like my washi tape. I don't always use it though. I kind of forget I have it. Um, ooh, this person wrote small. Designer Arena Konoplich. My eyes are... <laughs> what they once were so we have the stitch right here the stitcher ended up using a little bit of a bow which is always a way kind of like you're hanging your piece up right and then we have some embossed kind of raised embossed cardstock right here to do the layers this one the stitcher has their piece here with the stitch. They have the snowflake embellishment and then they used sparkle rickrack. So that's kind of like the snow. And I mean, things like snow and everything else has movement. So the rickrack really works with that. I was thinking when I was looking at these, I hadn't thought about rickrack, but how cool would some of this be if down the line there is a summer theme and you wanted to create some water, you could use a couple layers of one color or multiple colors of rickrack. That might be kind of cool. This one right here. So we have a teeny tiny little stitched element and then the stitcher created the scene. This is some layered, kind of like layered, kind of, um, I want to say mountains. It's not mountains. It's um, glaciers, ice caps, whatever's melting, right? <laughs> um, so you have some of that and then you have the snow, which is the felt and then some little felted or felt um, stickery penguins to go with the stitched penguin. So your element could be the full stitched item or it could be a little item and then you kind of mix and max, max, mix and match around there. This one's called it snowing. So the stitcher used just about the entire piece. They did create a little stitched back stitched border and then they kept the extra of their fabric so it's almost like it's two layers and then there's a little bit of a charm right there and they did loop it with some floss and that's how they kept it attached this one now this stitcher used rickrack in a different way you have your stitched piece as the full piece right here and then just like you would back uh maybe something um ornament wise or whatever, they took the rickrack around the edges and added the backing that way. I've not tried that. I think that's something I want to give a try. I think I've, I've thought about doing that with some of like my ornaments and stuff. And then I just, well, I need to get rickrack and then I forget. This one here, the stitcher made use of the color of the stitch. So we have, so the snow itself looks like it's a twelve and then everything else is stitched. And they used extra of their fabric as kind of like their border. And they pulled out the color of their, their little house to go with the pink cardstock. So it kind of shows that a little bit off a little bit. So yeah, you take a color from your stitch, replicate it either exactly or lighter or darker, depending on what looks good to you. And that's your, that's your base. This one, the, piece is stitched 
And again, so it was just enough that they were able to just leave themselves a cardstock border around the edge, probably like a quarter inch border. I don't think it's three eighths, probably a quarter inch. This one here, this stitcher also used felt. And so that we have the stitched piece right here. These are, they are, they look like stickers. And then the felt. So now I've done this before too. My general way of doing it is I figure out where my stitch is going. Then I put my felt on afterwards. So this way I can almost, if I want, in some cases, just feel like it's sunk a little bit into it because the felt is generally gonna be thicker than your stitching. Alrighty, this one here, we have, this fabric is really kind of neat. Uh, we have the snowflake stitched in white, and then we have the two different elements here, and these are sparkly. We have silver and uh, white sparkles, and that's placed on a card. Nope, that is, is that fabric? I think that's fabric, actually. And then, same stitcher. Yeah, that's fabric. I'm almost sure that's fabric. It's okay. Nothing happened to it. <laughs> this time they used the white um, fabric and then used just the silver with the stitched piece and then layered it onto the matching cardstock. Here, let's see if sometimes, um, so the designer is Arena Konoplich Skates. So the stitcher here decided to use a nice bright red and gray are a nice color combination if you need a color combination. Uh, ribbon on top to kind of again add that kind of top element and then there are a few, these would be self-adhesive probably pearls, which also can look like snowflakes or just a decorative element. Now here, this stitcher, the, um, the stitch piece is the entire piece, but what the stitcher did was they used, I don't know if this would be, what would be considered, does it say? Uh, Rustico or a, no, or a um, oatmeal or one of those. This is adapted from Jardin Privé, one of their gnome pieces. But because they stitched it in this direction, I don't know if you see it, but to me, it looks like the gnome is moving and the gnome is actually skiing because they used, uh, they, they stitched it in such a way that the gnome, it, it's, it's kind of going. So look at your fabrics and how you put placement and something like this, where you actually have ready-made movement. You've got your stitched piece, but you have that element already with it too. This one here is, let's see here, pattern by Mar Marlene, pastime pieces. So the, we have the stitched piece right there. And then this stitcher chose to cut it out into an oval and that gave them some space to do this is that looks like fabric actually so they labor, layered fabric on their cardstock and then they were able to place their piece on it and they layered it really it's nicely with the with the the actual um oval look you've got basically snowflake corners in there which is a great idea now this one here this is snow unique is what it's called and it's an improvised. So this was designed by the stitcher themselves. And so they, they've, we've got the border and then they improvised the snowflakes on the inside. And then they did a very, another kind of back stitched border all the way around here, right before they fringed the edges. And that way they were able to design it to the exact size that they wanted because they had, they did the, the design themselves. And something like snowflakes, you can either make them up yourself or how many patterns do all of us have with snowflakes in them? You know, even was it this year's, last year's Prairie School or Santa had a whole bunch. And I'm, I'm sure we all have snowflakes everywhere. This one right here, uh, this one is in the plastic pretty well. So I'm not going to try to take it out because I don't want to ruin any elements. So what the stitcher did here, this is the stitched piece and they fussy cut it all around the edges to make it a snowflake shape. And this is patterned paper. So here you have like a snowy scene already there. And then they used some um, flat back crystals of different colors. And they were able to put this right up here. So it looks like part of the scene with the snowy forest. So they really utilized a certain section of the patterned paper in just the way that they wanted to, to create the scene. This one right here, we have a double layer fussy cut. 
Uh, so first the stitched piece right there, the uh, cute little snowman. And so that was fussy cut. And then they probably layered it on cardstock. Yep. And they fussy cut that. And then they placed it on some, it's really some fun metallic, I don't know if you can tell, pattern paper. And those are, they're circles. They look like cut, um, punched circles of a different pattern paper, which is also metallic. And that gives it kind of that, you know, cornered look, having all the four corners. This one here, what is the stitcher calling this? It's from Better Homes and Garden 2001 Cross Stitch Designs. It's from Containers. So you have the stitched piece right there. And then they have, is that fabric? Yeah, that's fabric. So they layered it on a fabric that kind of pulled in all of the different colors as well right there with it. Now these, this is a set of three from a stitcher. And so I'm gonna show you them one at a time and then I'll start bringing them in. So we have first this little snow guy stitched on the, the um, fabric. And then just, these are stickers, kind of like splat snowflake stickers. And then obviously the same theme of snow of snowman. And what I want to know, and the stitcher that created them, if you're watching this, is this the same piece mirror imaged? Like, did you mirror image it or did they come that way? But what a great idea if you wanted to do something and have them have something like looking at each other or looking away. I don't think of things like that where you just mirror image. But they are clearly all a certain set of design there. So... I'm going to put those back in there afterwards. Okay. This one is called All Shook Up. It is a little snow globe. So the stitcher stitched their piece. Then what they did was they braided some twine. I've done twine before, but I've never thought to braid it into the different colors. So that's kind of a neat idea. And then they placed it on some patterned paper and then onto the cardstock base. This one here, the stitcher utilized different layers again. So is that paper? Yeah, it is. So they stitched their piece, cut it down, pattern paper, and this is glitter cardstock actually. So you can get, and that bit glitter is embedded into it. It's not coming off. But if you were doing um, maybe a, a few of these or you were backing an, an ornament with some, you know, you can use you can get like a sheet of that at say a big box store and then cut it down for different things that you would need or online. There's lots, there's different places to get that kind of glitter paper. This one right here is that, yeah, that looks like a uh, pattern paper. So we have our stitched piece. We have the layered pattern paper. And again, they pulled the colors of the piece and then they finished it. The little red door has got the red base so that that kind of ties everything right in there. And I'm, almost hit my camera again. Sorry about that if it shook. Now this, I couldn't I couldn't bear to open these up because they were they were um closed so nicely by the designer. So I have no idea what these trading cards look like on the inside. Oh, and gosh, now that they're out of their envelope, I if these are yours, let me know. Because, I mean, I'm sure I can probably backtrack. I have all the envelopes and names, but it would be sure easier if you let me know um, who you are. Everything, these are already made and designed and decorated so nicely that I just didn't want to mess them up if I opened it. And, you know, I didn't want to break anything, to be honest with you. So if you receive one of these, please send me a picture. I am dying to know what's inside. And if these are yours, if you could just send me a quick either um, DM on Instagram, Gmail, a uh, message, just so I know that they're yours. I can, I can do the backtracking, but you would save me a lot of time if you actually reach out to me on that. This one, I'm just going to gently take out and then I'll put it back in afterwards because I don't want to mess up the elements. So here, the stitcher used, the tiny little piece right here is stitched. So we have, that's not, I don't know if that's a toile or a toile mixed with some sort of sparkle. So we have sparkle here at the bottom that they stitched, and this is a patterned paper. But then what they did was they took, um, I'm sure you can still buy them. I know you used to. 
you could get a whole, um, these would be like flat back adhesive crystals and you could get a whole container of them, different sizes, some different colors and designs. So here you have the different shades of blue and the clear and some different colors. And so they made that as like the smoke rising from the cabin. Cute idea. I like that. I have some of those sitting in one of my drawers. Have I used them? No. Should I? Yes. <laughs> this one's, let's see if there's an, no, no title on it. We have a couple little penguins that are uh, maybe on a date. <laughs> so the stitched piece is most of the element. And then we have, there is, these would be brads on this side right here, finishing it off on this side. So it's it's set and um, set offset on the center there. And this would be patterned paper. And then this is a, that would be a charm. And it's a brad that's holding the charm in place. Now this one is a set of design that clearly is, I don't, they don't say necessarily where they're from. So I don't know who the designer is, but I thought I'd show you them all at once. There's four different ones and they're all, they're four different designs. So we have red snowmen and each one is decorated slightly differently. We have some, I don't, I don't think those are brads. I think those are stickers um, on the cardstock. So we have our stitch piece. And what the stitcher did in most of the cases here is they kept the bottom to be completely aligned with your base. So this way it looks like the snowman's in the snow, but then they fussy cut different parts of the top. Here's another one. So you can see how it's fussy cut up top. And so they can create the, the, the scene. And is that opal? Yeah, that's an opal fabric. So there's those two. And then we have two more. This one is like the others where it's fussy cut just up top. This one, they kind of, they fussy cut a little bit more of their design. So I don't know who the designer is with these, but you have four different pieces that you can kind of fill in in certain ways. And there you have four trading cards. Those are cute snowmen actually. Alrighty. Here we have, we have a title on this one, right? Yeah. Um, or it's it's from the Prairie Birds by Prairie Schooler. So you have your stitched piece there. And then the stitcher has different, They what they did was they used different um, measurements of border. So it makes it like almost pop. So you have a very, very tight border of the green cardstock here. And then a much bigger border here with the brown. And you have some crystals on each edge and then you have an in-between size border from those other two there on that would be cards uh, pattern paper so that way with the different size borders it doesn't always sometimes you want matchy matchy and do a whole kind of line like that but sometimes it's also fun to mix up the sizes of the borders and everything so it, it kind of adds a little bit extra inch interest this one here cocoa hot tub <laughs> Do we say who's by? Uh, Jenny Barton of JB Cross Stitch in Just Cross Stitch Magazine 2021. So this one was able to be stitched all the way to the edges and then a little tiny bit of fringe there. Yeah. Here we have what I would consider basically a deconstructed snowman. It's Owl Forest Embroidery. You have the stitched piece and then you have metallic um, pattern paper behind and they chose the a metallic color that would match a little bit of their element in the st stitched piece. Here we have two, I might as well show them together here. And these are two different, these are two different stitchers, but they both had the same sort of idea. So this one right here, you have, it's a full stitch piece, which is, you know, again, if you want to if you're worried or if you're nervous about it or you you just don't want to buy the extra stuff you can stitch all the way basically to the edges and uh this one here the snowflakes are stitched in over and above so this way it goes right to the edges and it's a full complete trading card this stitcher also did the same thing and oh those look like french knots <laughs> something i'm not able to do <laughs> we all know that by now so they stitched this part added the french knots and then that was again the size of their trading card base. So then they just had to layer it on the base cardstock to give it just that little strength, right? You, you know, and keeping keeping the card to be a card and give it that integrity of, of strength. 
All right, this one is in a sleeve, so I'm gonna keep it in that sleeve. This one here, the stitcher stitched it so that um, they were able to cut up this part onto, that is patterned paper, and then they kind of labeled it at the bottom winter. And those are two little snowflake designs on there too that might be printed on there. I don't think they're stamped, I think they're printed. This one is the same stitcher, so I'm gonna show you them both. Well, I'll show them each one and then I'll show you the, the, the design is both. These are probably from a same kind of designer though. Um, this one here stitched and there's a small little back stitch to kind of give it that finished look kind of thing. They have it cut up and then the top, this is patterned paper, I believe. I don't think it's, although, yeah, I don't think it's, Although, you know what? It could be patterned paper with washi tape, actually, thinking about it, if I'm looking at it, because I can kind of see on the edges of that one. That either might be two washi tapes or patterned paper with washi tape. And then they stitch this one as well with the same sort of idea. But yeah, you could do different layers of different designs and that would work out really well too. This one here, this is called In the Silence of the Forest. And so we've got the stitched piece and in order to really kind of make use of the kind of patterned cardstock right here, they cut it shaped wise, you know, kind of a half oval. And then there are a couple of just flat back crystal -y kind of designer elements right there. But again, the stitcher utilized the background scene to kind of create a scene for their stitch. Now this one, oh, that's uh, that's glitter paper. Okay, so this one here, the stitcher has their main stitch piece here. So they have a layer of cardstock and then they layered their glitter paper and then they were able to put their stitch over that and then a couple of buttons up top that are glued on. And uh, that way that can be like a top little element piece. You can glue buttons. You don't have to stitch them on if you don't want to. This one, Winter Cardinal again. Um, the stitcher did kind of an oval look to it. And then we have these little corner, they're gold corner stickers once they put them on the pattern paper to add the corner part of that. This one here, Free Chart by Doreen Jones. So this one was stitched just about to the edges. So the stitcher was able to cut it just right slightly smaller than what the two and a half and the three and a half would be. And they layered it with a nice little navy. So this way it would pull out the colors in their stitch. I love snowmen. There's so many variations of snowmen, isn't there? So this one is from Cross Stitch Sampler, Christmas 1992. So it's stitched, I wonder again, I wonder if this is, if that's kind of a printed um, fabric. Uh, it's either printed or it was created by the stitcher itself, themselves. And then we have the metallic um, patterned paper underneath and the colors really pull in between the pattern paper and the stitching there. This one is from Cross Stitch Gold. Love and Thanks, July, August, volume 156. So we have a giant penguin here. And again, that same fabric. I'm, I'm gonna go with that, it's a fabric. Uh, and they, they were able to place it, so there's some snowflakes around. So that, you have the fabric, so you have the stitch. Oh, I think the stitch piece. Okay, so this is actually stitched on what looks to be um, perforated paper and then they placed it on that bit of fabric and that's then layered onto the base cardstock. This one here, um, so many fun elements on this one. So first you have the stitched piece with a little bit of, I don't know if that's a twelve. Is it a twelve? No, I'm not sure. It might actually be glitter. And then what I thought was fun was the stitcher took some kind of like jute rope, hemp rope or whatever, and put it at the bottom of the of the bird. So it looks like the bird is in a nest. So they created a nest. And then there is 
some other um, embellishments, kind of like a, a a doily look. I'm not exactly sure of what to call, but it, you know, kind of then finishes everything off as a layer, which kind of ties all of the piece in. And then there's also a um, button to kind of add it to the whole winter theme. This one here, this one is called um, Bird Feeder, Irina Konoplich. And so we have the stitched piece right here. So the stitcher used a bow at the corner. And what they did here is their base cardstock is actually dry embossed. It's kind of like a Swiss dot look, which can mimic snowflakes, right? And then some ribbon below their stitched piece. Let's see here. This one here um, is Stitch Row Winter. The designer is Annabella. And we have the stitch piece is the size of the cardstock. So that makes it nice and easy. And then the stitcher chose a really nice piece of cardstock uh, color that would really pull out the dark color in the, um, the house itself. So again, it ties it all in. This we have, um, is there names on this? Blackwork Motif from Shelf by Emblems Designs. And so we have Blackwork. And what was interesting with this one, and it's kind of cool. So you have the stitch piece, and this is fabric all the way from one side to the other. But what the stitcher did was they used ribbon, and a very thin ribbon, first to do the corners. But then what I thought was a neat idea was then she also put one, but you know, and the next to her stitching where she had some extra and then these are flat back crystals. So she kind of divided the piece up. Think about, you know, when we have different stitches where there's like different divided parts. That's what she did with this. And then same sort of idea, same stitcher. This one is also from Shelf by Emblem's Designs. But this time what the stitcher did was, so they have, they have kind of like the glitter glue and I, I can't for the life of me think of it. I can I can visualize the little bottles and I just can't think of what it is. And then what they did was, so they have the books right here. Um, yeah, and so it's almost like the books are on a shelf. What they used, nice fuzzy ribbon right there. And they put ribbon, left a space, put ribbon, and then they used that glitter again in between. So it almost looks like it's one big piece of ribbon, but it's actually two and they created that design element there. So that's kind of a neat idea too. This one again is in a um, plastic, so I don't wanna take it out. Oh, this is the one where I cannot say the name. <laughs> I have, there's no way I'd pronounce that correctly. So the stitcher was able to stitch this to the size of the trading card and then label, label it, layer it onto base cardstock. Okay. I'm doing my best not to, I just have to talk about these. I can't, there's just so many great ideas. So this is just a long video. Um, Outdoor Friends, this is called Inspired by Waxing Moon Designs Winter Littles. And it is sulky thread that was used. So again, the stitcher was able to stitch pretty much to the size of the card, add a little stitch around the edges to, to kind of finish it off and then fringe the very final fringe part. This one here, the stitcher, does it say, it's just called, it's called Hoot. <laughs> and it is stitched on its piece right here. And then what they did was, so they, they used most of it for their card. And then they, the top layer here, they have a little bit of metallic paper and they put a brad up top and that would be a glitter brad to kind of finish off the element. Here we have Snowflakes, does it say? Um, just says 2024 Winter Exchange. Um, again, very cool fabric that was used to put, not snowflakes, these are ice skates. <laughs> ice skates and used glitter cardstock. So that would kind of draw in, you know, the same color scheme as the um, ice skates. I almost said snowflakes again. This one is called Solitary Grandeur, and it is from Simply Cross Stitch Magazine. So the stitcher stitched their piece. These are actually kind of cool. They're almost teardrop sort of crystally stickers, and they use those in the corner and then metallic cardstock underneath. 
This one here, the Stitcher, again, used um, kind of like a, I have no idea what it's called. I'm going to go with Rustico or Oatmeal or something. But the, the lines are distinct. So this one, the, the lines go this way, which is kind of neat because it kind of creates movement back and forth from the stitch piece. This one here, the stitch piece, is again the entire design. And then these are, looks like stickers that are around the edge to give a little bit of snowflake. This one is some full coverage stitching here. This is uh, Winter Woods by Satsuma. Make sure I have it right. And there's, well, this is half stitch up here, but that is full coverage stitching. <laughs> I think I have this design and I thought about using it and then I just didn't get to it for the uh, swap. Okay, this one, let me pull it out of the, see if I can get it out of the plastic. You know, this one's not coming out, so I'm just going to leave it in there for now. Um, Country Cottage Needleworks is where this is from. And so again, stitched on a nice dark fabric. So that way it kind of looks like nighttime scenes and um, placed all the way to the edges of their cardstock. This one, I remember the floss. I did not realize this until I saw the floss tubers video. And um, I need to tell this story because it really is amazing. So let me show you the piece right here. So the stitched piece is all this element here, here, and up to here, right? And then the stitcher used kind of like a little jute um, string to make it look like there's some curls of, of steam coming up. Well, what I didn't realize until I watched their video when they were talking about it, do you see the scene behind? So, you know, we're looking through a window. That is actually watercolored by them. So there is a tree and a cardinal and some kind of snow, kind of, you know, that watercolory look of snow in the background. And then they created, I would assume that's some sort of ribbon of some sort. They created the curtains and the window panes. So it looks like you've got your stitching in the front of a window and you're looking out into the actual outdoor scene. I wish I could watercolor like that. <laughs> this one here, this is, Oh, like a burlap. Okay, that's a cool idea too. So here we have your stitch piece. And then this is a burlap kind of, um, I wonder if it's self-adhesive or if it was glued on themselves. Some of, the, some of these things, like there is self-adhesive felt and glitter felt and some other things. Um, and then to finish off the bottom. So this, th this showed off the purple, which is kind of cool. And then they added a couple of um, glittery snowflakes to kind of match there, those are, that looks like a toile. So then they have the glitter snowflakes to match the stitching. This one here, no, oh, it's a stitched on 14 count, but it doesn't say where it's from. Um, nice big piece of stitching. And then one little, this would be a sticker. And that way they were have, they had it right on their full edge. So then they just had to layer it on their cardstock. We're almost there. We're getting there. We are getting there. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this one after this one because it's a set from a designer. All right. So next we have um, uh, penguins again, penguins and snowflakes. So here we have our stitched piece. We have glitter, white cardstock, and then a different color blue at the base and then some stickers. And again, that's a very cool fabric. So it almost looks, it looks like almost bluish grayish. So it looks like there's some motion in it too. Now this one, this designer with these uh, four pieces, they really utilize the idea of um, variegated floss. So all of these are stitched in the same variegated floss, but they're all designed differently. So this one here, the stitcher has their stitch pieces. They took some, um, I don't know if it was an actual book. So you can, you know, like with junk journals, you can take books, you can, they obviously either tea dyed it or they, they, they did something to it. They distressed it. They have a layer of that. Um, they have brads. Are these brads? Yeah, they're brads. And then some cardstock. And then I can do two at once, right? So this one, we have your stitching again. There's 
some like kind of a lace and some um, satin ribbon. And then we have button up here with some a boa and everything. So again, different, different designs, but kind of that variegated look of the, the um, floss. So it really adds to the picture. So here you've got a couple different elements and they are on um, an embellishment piece here with some brads and some cardstock. And then the final one, which I thought was kind of a neat idea. These are ice skates, right? So you've got skating. You've got a skate and you've got mittens. And what they did was they mimicked that look. How You know how mittens or skates are always kind of hung over a shoulder. So they used ribbon and they hung it down and they hung the pieces down from there. And that's on the cardstock. So a, a bit of variegated floss could give you kind of that fun look too. Okay, this one. Oops, I had two right there. This one is um, stitched almost to the edges and then they have a very tight border of glitter cardstock. Here we have another one that's stitched to the edges. So if you can find designs that go all the way to the edges um, and then they used, I don't know if that would be considered confetti or what it would be. There's little star sparkles that look kind of like snowflakes that they put with on their within their piece right there. All right, we are down to like the last one, two, six. All right, this is in um, the plastic, so I don't want to take it out. Wooly and cozy. So you have um, stitched all the way to the edges. You have the snowflakes are all backstitched. You have the mittens, and then it is layered on cardstock. This one, <laughs> I thought this was a really cute idea. Again, stitched on the navy. Does it say where it's from? Frony Ritter from Just Cross Stitch, August 2020. So you've got the stitched piece right here. And then these are, they're like little felt circles. So they have the little piles of snowflakes underneath the word snowflake. And they do have a couple beads on there as well. Super cute. This one here is called Burr. <laughs> and it is stitched basically to the edges. And that is... That looks like a glitter cardstock it's on. And they use the same kind of color blue that their stitch was on. This one here, I was trying to think of, this pattern is from I Love Cross Stitch Book, Fast Christmas Cards. So you've got the pattern there. And then these are kind of like photo corners, but they are metal. So I don't know if those are the type that you put in and you, I don't know if you have to crimp them at all. But it, it basically looks like a picture, right? Remember in our, old, old scrapbooks and we used to have the photo corners and you'd put things in like that. That's what they did with this one. So that gives it the corners a really kind of neat look. Two more. This snowman right here is, let's see, what is that? That almost looks like a mulberry paper. It's a distressed paper of sorts. I'm not 100% sure though. Um, maybe not, mul well, it does kind of look like mulberry. So here we have our stitched piece right here. And then we have um, whatever this distressed paper is layered. And so it kind of gives it that kind of aged look, so to speak, or weathered look. And then the stitcher put, did they, they glued them. They glued the buttons on in the corners to kind of, again, give it that kind of cornered out look. And then, oh, and there is a button on the middle with um, a little bow. The last one that I received, certainly not least, uh, very cool use of embellishment of, um, trim. I would never have thought to use this for snow. So I don't know, is this like a, um, sequin, almost like a sequin ribbon. So they use three layers of the sequin ribbon underneath their stitching. And then they have sequins all the way all around their stitching, uh, to kind of signify like snow. And then they placed it on the cardstock base. And then just as a reminder, the three that I have made, I have one other thing stitched and we'll see if I get to it. This one here, I uh, just used beads all the way around. I got a little crazy with the beads, but I just kept going and I couldn't stop and then just layered it with a matching uh, navy cardstock. This one is a very small stitch. I had stitched, stitched this little guy and then I put the felt snow around him. The silver is um, mica spray. So I sprayed it first and then I used a gold metallic pen to kind of make 
stars in the sky. So it's like it's stars with some snow. And then the last one that I have finished, we have this one right here. So the stitch piece is all of this. This is, and it's layered onto my, um, I don't have it lab labeled it, but I used a pink cardstock base to match the house. And then these, so up here we have uh, beads for snow. Here we have two snow um, tree, uh, brad trees. So these are actually brads. I When I, I stitched this on the 20 count, because I knew I wanted to make it look like the trees were about the, up the side of the house. And then this is, this is just um, cardstock. And I dry embossed it with two different designs to kind of really distress it, to look like kind of distressed old snow. Just not, you know weathered from the plows and stuff. <laughs> so those are my three. And maybe there'll be another one. If I do, um, you may or may not see it. Depends on when these get sent out. So I hope you like that. Um, so March 1st is Friday. I am going to, it's a busy week this week. So I'm going to ask for your grace and I am going to, I've already told Mo, he's helping me next weekend. And we are going to uh, get all of these packaged up and ready to go. And then early next the early next week, right? Yeah, which will be beginning of March. They will go out and I will go to the mailbox, to the mail, the post office, and make sure everything is right and ready for um, them to be properly mailed out to you. And uh, I will let you know when that happens. And so I hope I'm so thankful to each and every one of you who gave this a try. Some of you I know were nervous about the finishing part and good on you for doing it. I am so I'm just so thrilled that you gave it a go and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy this video and get some great ideas. There will be two more swaps this year if you're interested. Um, one probably I want to say with the June 1st deadline and one probably with the October 1st deadline again, but be on the lookout. Uh, a couple months before that deadline, there will be videos that will give you what the theme is and all of the information. So until next time, happy stitching.